Good morning, Naomi. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm just off to place my bets on this afternoon's racing. Do you think you're going to win? Oh, for sure. My horoscope says that I will find luck in unusual places, and unusual places is running in the 3.30 at Cheltenham, so I think I'm onto something. Uh, you do know horoscopes don't work. People can't really predict the future. Really? But I thought you believed that people predicted Jesus long before he was born. It's a bit inconsistent, isn't it? Either people can predict the future, or they can't. Which is it? It's a fair question. What Christians call the Old Testament is full of prophecy, people predicting what is going to happen in the future. It's a key part of the Christmas story too. Just listen to these examples. This was how Jesus, God's anointed one, was born. His mother Mary had promised Joseph to be his wife. But while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Her fiancé, Joseph, was a righteous man, full of integrity, and he didn't want to disgrace her. But when he learned of her pregnancy, he secretly planned to break the engagement. While he was still debating with himself about what to do, he fell asleep and had a supernatural dream. An angel from the Lord appeared to him in clear light and said, Joseph! Descendant of David, don't hesitate to take Mary into your home as your wife, because the power of the Holy Spirit has conceived a child in her womb. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Saviour, for he is destined to give his life to save his people from their sins. This happened so that what the Lord spoke through his prophet would come true. Listen, a virgin will be pregnant, she will give birth to a son, and he will be known as Emmanuel, which means in Hebrew, God become one of us. When Joseph awoke from his dream, he did all that the angel of the Lord instructed him to do. He took Mary to be his wife, but they refrained from having sex until she gave birth to her son, whom they named Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem near Jerusalem during the reign of King Herod. After Jesus' birth, a group of spiritual priests from the east came to Jerusalem and inquired of the people, where is the child who is born king of the Jewish people? We observed his star rising in the sky and we've come to bow before him in worship. King Herod was shaken to the core when he heard this, and not only him, but all of Jerusalem was disturbed when they heard this news. So he called a meeting of the Jewish ruling priests and religious scholars, demanding that they tell him where the promised Messiah was prophesied to be born. He'll be born in Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, they told him, because the prophecy states, And you, little Bethlehem, are not insignificant among the clans of Judah, for out of you will emerge the shepherd king of my people Israel. So what is going on here? Did people really predict Jesus? Or is this Christians reading back into ancient texts to make them say what they want them to say? To find out more, I spoke to Paul Oakley, recently retired vicar and former lecturer at St Hill College in Sheffield. So does the Old Testament, written 2000 years before Jesus was born, really tell us that he was going to be coming? Well, the Old Testament history, it's not like history written in advance, you know, like those cartoons you sometimes see uh, where there's a calendar on the wall saying, you know, 525 BC, which, of course, the joke is nobody knew that they were 325 BC. It's not like that. It's actually more exciting than that. The Old Testament has prophecies, visions of the future uh, rather than a, a calendar, rather than history written in advance. It, it's more exciting than that. So what do those prophecies point us forward to? I suppose you could sum it up by saying these prophecies are saying God is up to something, you know. God is going to do some, is doing something tremendous. He's preparing a way for people to know him in a new way. He's preparing a way for people to be utterly forgiven. He's preparing to change the world. That evil is going to finally be 
disposed of from the world. God is going to be at the centre. It's called the kingdom of God and it's coming. But the Old Testament doesn't give a detailed timetable or, or a blueprint for that. So how does Jesus fit into all of that then? Well, these prophecies in the Old Testament, there are various key figures that emerge and they're going to have something key to do with this new kingdom. There's a king. I guess we're familiar with the, the reading from Isaiah. You often have a, a carol service that says, for to us, a child is born to us, a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. So there's a king who's going to come to bring in this kingdom. And another prophecy in Micah that we sometimes have read at carol services says this king is going to be born in Bethlehem. So there's a king, but there's also another figure, a kind of ultimate prophet who's going to come, somebody who's going to be the absolute word of God. And Jesus is called the word of God. But there's going to be this communication from God that's absolutely perfect coming. So there's a king coming, there's a prophet coming, there's, there's the ultimate priest coming. A priest is a go-between between between humans and God, and there's going to be a priest. There's one of the verses in the Psalms says he'll be a priest forever. So there's a priest coming. And then there's this mysterious figure called the suffering servant that you get in Isaiah. We're probably familiar with this more from uh, Good Friday than Christmas. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was on him by his wounds we are healed so there's this suffering person coming who's going to be almost like a sacrifice okay so obviously we've mentioned you know bethlehem came in there which which we're familiar with that from the christmas stories but but other than that can we really be sure that jesus is the person these writings are talking about well the way it seemed to work was people who met jesus suddenly began to realize hang on he, he's he's fitting all these pencil sketches, he is the full painting, not just for one of them, but for all of them. He talks about my kingdom. So hey, he's, he's a king. He says he's a king. And people began to realise, he, he says things like, the words I say to you, I don't speak on my own authority. I and the Father are one. And they started thinking, oh, he, he's this perfect prophet. He's bringing this message from God. A perfect priest. He said things like, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. He's the perfect go between and the perfect sacrifice, the perfect suffering servant, if you like. He said, I've come to give my life as a ransom. So it wasn't that uh, you can nail it all down. But people who met Jesus began to think he's all of these things. He, he's the king that's been promised. He's this perfect communication. He's this perfect priest. He's this perfect sacrifice. Oh, wow. Now. We can do the same. I, I can't prove to you that Jesus fulfills all these prophecies. But what I can say is, check it out. Doesn't it make sense? Aren't these the things we're longing for? And people for those centuries in the Old Testament were longing for a perfect ruler, a perfect king, a perfect priest, a perfect communication, a perfect sacrifice. Aren't we longing for somebody to do all these things? for us to bring us to God so I can't prove to you that you know um, by a scientific mathematical proof that yeah Jesus fulfills all these things but when you look at it he does all I can do is invite you to well check him out does he really do what he says on the tin does he really give us the opportunity of coming to know God for ourselves and I believe that he does Paul, that's really interesting and challenging. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Paul was very clear that we can't prove that these Old Testament writings were talking about Jesus. But his belief is that if we look at them carefully, they point to him in a way that is more than just coincidence. Certainly the early Christians believed that, and many of them were willing to give up their lives because they believed that Jesus was the one who God had promised. Lord, help us to be open to your plan for this world to the part that Jesus plays in that, and to the part that we might play in it too. Amen. So